Hello world, my name is Anthony Bao and this is Airport Arbitrage. In or Airport Arbitrage, you were given a list of exchange rates and asked to verify that they were consistent or tell us if they weren't. So the exchange rates that you're given form a graph of ways that you can get to certain currencies through the exchange rate edges. The way that we're going to determine whether something is consistent is by traveling along the edges and seeing if we can make different amounts of money by going different ways. So for instance, we can start with one of number zero. We can travel along this edge to make 0.9 of one, travel along this next edge to make 0.09 of two, and then we can verify to see if it's, then we can check to see if it's the same as going along this path which it might or might not be. There's a nuance in the problem where it says that because of rounding errors, it can be consistent if you modify each ledge edge by at most 0.001. So the way that we'll determine whether or not this is the case is by keeping track of the maximum and minimum, the maximum and minimum possible values that you can get if the edges were a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So for instance here, instead of storing 0.9, we'd store 0.901, because that's the maximum that the edge could be. And we'd store that there's a minimum of 0.899. And then we'd continue doing the same thing on the next one. So instead of 0.09, we'd store 0.901 times 0.101, whatever that is. It's something slightly bigger than 0.009. And the same in the reverse. And then if this next one collides with it and the two ranges don't overlap at all, then we'll know that it's inconsistent. We'll do this graph search by just a depth first search from this, marking each one with the amount that we got for the first time, and then comparing it the second time. And we'll do this starting at each node, and then if all the nodes check out, then we'll say that it's consistent. Otherwise, we'll say that it's inconsistent. So now we can look at the code. First, we need to set up some structures so that we can deal with graphs. We'll have each node will know a linked list of its outputs so that we can iterate over them easily. And each node will also know its ID. Or each node will know each node will know a linked list of the nodes that it can get to and the exchange rates that it needs to get there. And we'll also know its own ID. We'll also have a structure in which we store the records that we read in at input so that they're easy to deal with. Appending something to a linked list is something that we'll want to do often, so we'll have a helper function for it. All we'll do is we'll allocate a new element to the list and then point to the previous one with it. And then we'll need to find the absolute value of a difference to determine if the same edge is off by more than our tolerance rate. Next, we'll define the DFS. The de Next, we'll define the depth first search that does the main meat of this program. This function will look at one node, look at all its neighbors, determine if there are any inconsistencies right at its neighbors. If there are, it will immediately return false. Otherwise, it will recurse down to its neighbors after marking the one that we've already visited the current node. Because it marks that it's visited each node that it does, this one will not loop forever because it will stop when it hits a node that's already visited. First, we mark that we've already checked the node that we're currently at. We also mark Whatever we also mark the amount of money that we've decided that we the maximum and minimum amounts of money that we've decided that we can get at this node from whatever starting node we were called on. Then we iterate through all its neighbors by looking at all of the out edges from this node. If the neighbor that we're looking at has already been checked, we'll see if there's an inconsistency. We'll tell whether there's an inconsistency by seeing whether our two maximum and minimum ranges overlap. If they do, we'll return false, otherwise, we'll return true, and that'll happen at the end of the function. If it hasn't already been checked, we'll check it by recursing and doing depth first search on it as well. We'll call depth first search again, passing it the pointer to our checked array and our max and min rates array so that it has access to the same information, and giving it and telling it that the amount of money that it can have, maximum and minimum, is our current maximum times a little bit more than the given rate, and the minimum is our current minimum times a little bit less than the given rate. If it reports an inconsistency, then we'll report an inconsistency too. This way, inconsistency, this way, reports of inconsistency will bubble up the stack, and, after, and this, the first call will return false. 
If no inconsistencies were reported in all, from any of the neighbors, then we'll return true, saying that there's no inconsistencies at this part of the graph. Now that we've set up what we'll do with the graph, we need to create the graph and call that function. First, we'll read in the input. We read in the number of trades, and then we read that many lines and w with one trade per line. We're not told how many IDs there are, so we'll just store the maximum ID as the biggest ID that we saw in a trade ever. Now that we've read in the IDs, we'll construct the graph. One thing that can happen in this problem that the graph won't detect is that the same edge might be specified twice with a different exchange rate. That's an inconsistency, so we'll need to keep track to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we'll have a table of every exchange, a table of all the exchange rates between two currencies. And if we disagree with this table, then we'll report an inconsistency. Meanwhile, we'll be constructing the graph. To construct the graph, we'll go through all the trades. We'll check to see whether this trade is already, already disagrees with a different trade that we've already seen. If it is, we'll report an inconsistency. Otherwise, we'll add it to the graph. We'll add it to the graph by doing our linked list append, that function that we defined earlier, to the edges, to the output edges of this node. And we'll also define the reverse edge, saying that we can do the currency exchange backwards by doing one over the rate instead of the rate. Now we do our depth first search on each node. We start at each node, initialize an empty array saying that we haven't checked anything yet, initialize arrays with all of the least and most amounts of money that we can get at each node, and then, and then start a depth first search with these empty arrays starting at our given node, saying that we can start with one of that currency. If the DFS reports an inconsistency, in other words, it returns false, then we'll immediately say that this is inconsistent and stop. Otherwise, we'll continue the loop until it's done. After we've checked all the nodes, if no inconsistencies have been reported, we'll return one saying that it's consistent. And this was airport arbitrage.